Afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon. We'll get straight to the big talking point from the weekend's fixtures and obviously your trip to Old Trafford. Um, the incident with Lukaku and, and Gateng Bong. Mm. The FA have just come out in the last few moments and said that there will be no further action taken. What are your thoughts on the incident and the fact that mm. it now will remain unpunished? Mm. Well, of course, I'm, I'm uh, aware of the incident. Um, the FA uh, make the decisions that uh, they make and for the the reasons that um, that they make and um, and probably that's all you know I have to say on it. It's not something that um, that, that affects us uh, now. Um, more my thoughts are more on the fact that the disappointment that perhaps we didn't get to the result that uh, that I felt we perhaps deserved to get. But it's not something that uh, that affects us now and uh, and it's up to the FA to make the decisions and the reasons why they make them decisions. Was it surprising to you after the game? Did, did Gateshead speak to you and say, "Did you see what happened? Have you looked at the mm. video analysis?" It seems quite surprising. Well, I it's uh, I I have seen it, um, and I, I I must admit I even walking into the press conference afterwards I wasn't uh, I wasn't aware of it. Um, I was made aware of it um, the, uh, afterwards, so um, very aware of the content of uh, of course uh, what happened. Um, but I was only made aware of that afterwards. But um, let's say my thoughts on it at this moment are: is that you know it's not something that uh, affects us. The FA have to make decisions. They have the reasons for making uh, any decision, and uh, uh, and my concentrations now have to be on on uh, our next game. Moving forward to your next game, despite the fact you you suffered a defeat at Old Trafford. Can you take so much more from the game in terms of confidence and the ability to defend against a, a difficult mm. team and the fact that the goal was a, a deflection and own goal essentially when you move forward for your next match against Palace? Uh, well, it was the, the definitely far more uh, positives from um, the, the game at Old Trafford than, than there were negatives. And um, I thought we were very positive in the way that, uh, that we played. Uh, we certainly didn't go there just looking to make sure and sit behind a good ball and play it on the counter attack and I thought we had some really good periods ourselves of course the, the big disappointment is is that the frustration of the goal and and um, it, it's one of them very unusual deflected goals that um, that, that go against you uh, but the level of performance was good and uh, we, we all need to take you know that type of level of performance into what I think is actually a very a very good Crystal Palace team at the moment next is Palace and, and everyone will know about the rivalry. For you, this is your first opportunity to put yourself against the Palace team since you became Brighton manager. What are you aware about of the rivalry and the, mm. the sort of really tense nature of the atmosphere between the two clubs? Mm. Well, I've, I've certainly been probably made more aware of the rivalry in my in my time here than than perhaps before. You know, I'm uh, no... Palace, Crystal Palace as a club very well. I know Brighton as a club very well, and as a player, played ag uh, against both both clubs. But of course, it's only when you are you are here, and uh, even in that first season, and you be, the the rivalry becomes more apparent, and the reasons for it. So, I am I am conscious of that. It, it's it's very much one for the supporters and the clubs, and I say particularly the supporters, both sets of the supporters, and and as with you know any derby game that you play and it's you know it's one that you you want to win for the supporters. Crystal Palace have played six games away from home in the Premier League this season, lost all six and still haven't scored away from home. What do you read mm. into that ahead of this fixture? I don't think you can afford to to read anything into it. They, they, they've got you know quality players. I've, I've seen them play on four occasions um, this this season and in, in all four occasions they've been very good and uh, I can only presume what's happened to them is their margins that happen in, in the game and sometimes it's winning games or losing games be, can become a little bit of a momentum, a little bit of a, a, a rhythm. Um, but they have a, 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 a very good team and, and very good individuals and um, I have no doubt that, um, that they will start climbing up this table. Obviously Roy Hodgson's a vastly experienced manager. What memories do you have of coming up against a Roy Hodgson side? Mm. Um, not not so not so many, but uh, but I do know uh, Roy very well, and um, you don't become uh, England manager unless you are a, a, a top manager. And what they've brought in is somebody with vast experience, but with that experience comes an an, inc uh, an incredible in enthusiasm. And 
and anybody that's seen Roy work on on the training pitch will see that at, f at first hand. So they've got uh, uh, an excellent manager at uh, at the helm, and uh, and of course there to to guide them to better times. What's the Brighton team using every game? Uh, no different. Um, we're we're in good shape at the moment. No um, no uh, further uh, injuries, which is uh, which is good. We're hoping that Steve Sidwell will start. Um, doing some work outside next week, um, but uh, apart from that, we're we're everybody fit. And obviously, one player that will be key for this fixture is someone who's played for both sides, Glenn Murray, uh, and in good form at the moment as well. How much of his experience, and knowledge, and, and temperament will be a key factor in, in this game? Mm, well, we we certainly will need Glenn to to keep the form that he's in, um, keep that going. Um, he's been very good for us, and I think Glenn's Glenn's intelligent enough to know that um, the 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 emotion that can be in this type of game, and the fact that he's played for 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 both teams. Um, but I think Glenn's experienced enough. He's a, um, a clever enough footballer to know that he's got to to divorce himself from that. And uh, uh, and we need you know calm heads. We need him to do the ro the role that he's given us. You know since he's been back in the team. And of course, to win this fixture, you've you've got to score goals, and um, you know we we need somebody that's going to be at uh, the forefront of that. Talk about calm heads for your players. What about the fans? Because this is a, a fixture that, that really is, is for them, and the atmosphere at the Amex for this particular game could be could be key. Um, the the, I, I'd, the I'd have to say that the um, the atmosphere at the Amex has got better and better in my in my time here. And of course, what they all all enthuse by, of course, is is uh, doing that in the Premier League, which has, if anything, uh, made it a, a more vocal stadium. Um, it becomes natural that that when you're playing against your rivals, that um, that goes up another notch. Um, but generally, that goes up another notch if they one like what they're seeing, or you know, we're in a favourable position. So. Um, uh, we can't expect to, uh, uh, as as always, you can't expect a group of supporters to be vocal and loud if 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 they don't like what they're seeing from the team. And we've got to make sure that that is the case. <laughs> Good. Okay. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, um, in terms of that rivalry, 